Hi, I'm Brian. Hi, I'm Daisy. And we are Love Love, Love, Love Reptiles. Now, I just wanted to uh, make a uh, video on kind of starting. We all see the big breeders. You know, they have thousands of snakes, right? And when we watch some videos and they're telling you how to get started breeding, I don't have $50,000. Most of you don't have $50,000. If you do, great. But I got started with just this one snake that my daughter here, Daisy, begged to have. Now I had ball pythons when I was younger, about 2001, 2002. It was normal. I had some, my friends had some. That's all you got was normal. So I ended up getting rid of that after having it for a few years and kind of forgot about ball pythons for a while. I dealt with uh, bearded dragons, different other kind of animals, reptiles. They kind of forgot about the ball python. And that was until about three, four years ago. Now, when she first asked about it, I really didn't know about all the morphs. I didn't realize there, how many morphs there actually are, how many different looks they have. So we got to look in and we got Ezekiel here, which is a lesser pastel at a pretty good price. And it, I, I had never seen nothing like that before. So we ended up buying him. He's a great snake, as you see. He's, he's about three years old. Uh, we will be uh, planning on pairing him up with some females later on in the future. So about, about a year after we had him, I, I started looking into the morphs more. And I mean, I just automatic kind of passion about the animals. All the different things you can make, it's, it really is mind blowing. Now I started looking at different big, you know, YouTube videos uh, and all the big breeders, they got snakes everywhere, all the big time recessives. I, someday I plan on getting into that, right now I'm not. So we went from one to last year we bought a GHI Firefly, a female sub-adult. We had bred her this last fall with our Mojave pastel that we also got last year. Just to see what we could do with that because I really wanted GHI Mojaves. So we bred them last fall and she is about a week or two away from laying eggs. She ovulated probably about 40 days ago. Uh, so this is kind of my test run with that. Now everything so far is going great. I did not have to spend $50,000 to do that. I did start off with a homemade rack. I made it out of PVC for the three snakes that we have. And everything went well, but I did here in the last few months upgrade to a smaller ARS. It's not a, doesn't hold 60 snakes, doesn't even hold 20 snakes, but it is something to start with and ultimately pvc prices sheets are getting expensive they used to be about 50 dollars. now they're about 120 dollars a sheet and for the money and not have to build it ars was actually cheaper than building it in pvc racks now we bought him i bought the other female that i told you about but then i did mention a mojave pastel that we paired her with and when i bought him I thought it was sold to me as a her, right? So when I first started breeding, I bred him to the Mojave Pastel, and my bad that I was told as a female, I never checked it, that's kind of my bad. It's kind of 50-50 bad, right? So I put him in there, I did, it didn't end up well. I did, a lot of slashing around, they didn't want nothing to do with each other. All right, great, so I ended up sexting the female ended up being a male. So in return, instead of pairing him with the GHI Firefly, I paired the Mojave, mainly because I do want the Mojave GHIs. Now, here in the last week, I did buy some ball pythons, uh, four actually from SDG, 
uh, uh, pythons. And we'll show off a couple of those today, but those are gonna be in the future, hopefully in two or three years, I'll be able to get them going. I do have about 12 incomplete dominants between the nine snakes that I own now. So I bought, also bought two adult females. One is just a, she's, she's huge. I got it from Fireball Reptiles and she's just a pastel, but if she produces snakes, that, that, that's gonna be great. I probably plan on pairing him with her. And then I also bought a Butter Inchy Pastel Hypo and I plan on getting a male for her next year. And then here in a little bit, I'll get into what genes I actually bought with the other females. Now, the clutch that I produced this year, I plan on keeping one or two of the females out of that and then selling the rest to provide for next year on what we're gonna, what we can get. I might just add a couple more levels to the rack with that money. I'm not quite sure, uh, but eventually it's going to be a slow game, but eventually I'm going to get up there and be able to do the recesses. I'm going to be able to do the desert ghosts, the clowns. It's just at this point, I don't have that cash to be able to do that. It's going to be a slow game in the next, I don't know, I'd say three years I can get into that. And that's fine. I mean, these snakes are, are just as good as the recessives. It's just the recessives are really hot right now. They look good, don't get me wrong, they do look good, but they are at a magnificent price point. Um, but we will get there. Right now, we our plans are just to kind of be a, a hobbyist breeder. If the, in this room, it's not that big of a room, it's like an eight by 10 room that I got a rack with snakes, and I, I think I can fit probably about 100, 100 snakes in this room which is a lot. If out of 100 of them snakes, 50 are breeder females, I mean 50 clutches a year, that's a good bet. And then I will probably end up building a shed of some sort or maybe even uh, get a building somewhere else because 50 clutches, that's a lot of work. And then you're kind of at there, kind of getting out of the hobbyist type stuff because you're gonna need more, you're gonna need more things, more than just a room. So that's our plans. Now uh, we're gonna show off a couple of these females that we're gonna do in the future. I'm gonna put him up because he's getting really antsy. So one of the females that I did buy, we named her Callie. And she is a Inchy Fire Orange Dream Calico. This is the best one out of the, out of the group that I bought. As you can tell, she is really small. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll get the weight going, you know, two, three years, whenever she, uh, you know, probably three, hits about that 1500 gram mark, we're gonna pair her. What we're gonna pair to, I don't know. Things could change by then, I'm not really sure. But I really wanted to get into Calico. I really wanted to get into Orange Dream. This, uh, this snake gives me both of those. And she is, uh, she is just amazing looking. I mean, the, you can see the inchy striping, the Orange Dream kind of helps reduce that pattern as well. The Calico is really coming about 50-50. She is going, to look even better as an adult than she does now. Now there's no heads, there's no recesses in this. I mean, she looks, she looks great. Now I did buy a couple other one. I did buy two, uh, two sisters. They are going to be, they're both head ultra male. They're both inchy. One's got pastel on it. And my plan is with that, next year maybe two years get an ultra male male and pair that up then i can start creating ultra males getting into the recess a little bit ultra male is virtually still untapped i mean it looks amazing it's not quite albinoism but it does have a certain look um 
I mean, it, it, it's really great. So let me get one of those girls out. They're not ultra male, they're only hits, but they are, inch, one's an inchy, one's an inchy pastel. Now let's uh, put this girl up. She's our smallest and prettiest female. And also, here is. Watch out, Daisy. No. No, watch out. This is the rack that I just purchased. As you can see, it is not what you see in the big breeder, uh, you know, YouTube videos that you see. Uh, hopefully, we'll get there. But this is what we're starting out with. I'm proud of it. Next year, we're gonna add some more levels. We're gonna keep adding levels every single year until I basically get this room filled up at a comfortable rate. You don't wanna get started faster than your money can supply. Because you gotta think, it's, the more sinks you get, that's more rats you're gonna to have to get, the more room you're gonna to have to have for the rats. Like I, pr I produce my own rats, that helps the cost immensely. I watched, a guy on YouTube yesterday, he had a great collection. He had Can Canova stuff. He had all these big time recessives and he just posted a video about how he didn't know how he's gonna financially pay to feed those snakes because he didn't produce them himself. Um, and I think that's a, a problem that a lot of the breeders, you know, started up, you know, a couple years ago when COVID was going around, everybody's got money. Uh, and now they they can barely afford to feed the snakes that they're wanting to produce. Uh, so I think that helps a lot, uh, being able to produce your own uh, own rats, own food for the snakes. Uh, that helps money wise. And uh, you know I'm, I'm going to grow at the rate that I think I can grow. Uh, can I double this by next year? Maybe, can I, I mean, we have to be able to, you know, financially afford and, and be able to provide their, their room and be able to keep the animals uh, not only looking great, but that are healthy. I mean, that's the main thing. We can talk about recessives all day, but if you don't have a healthy snake, then, I mean, what's the point? But anyways, we're gonna get into is uh, an inchy pastel female. Her name's Ellie. Her name is Ellie. Pastel, pastel, and she had... So we're just gonna pull her old tub out here. Don't hiss at me. She's a little flighty than the other one. She's a little bit bigger than the other one. But that's okay. She's clocking in at about 400 grams. So I'm hoping, you know, like it's kind of like the other one. Two years from now, be able to breed her with a uh, an ultra male since she has het ultra male and cre create some uh, you know inchy pastel ultra males. Uh, depending on what I get in the mail, I'm not sure. I've almost kind of thought about depending on funds getting a, a pied ultra male because the pied ultra males uh, they 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 do they they look great. And I know she's not pied, but that I can start creating those double recesses and slowly get into that. Ultra male pieds, they're, they're a really good looking snake. They're really rare. Out of the thousands of thousands of snakes I've seen on Morph Market, I have, there's only five currently posted on Morph Market of an ultra male pied. Uh, they're, they are pricey. They're gonna hold their value because frankly, Nobody's making them. I think out of the five, those were only two different breeders that were uh, they're producing them out of the five. Now, are a lot of people holding them back? Could be. I mean, everybody's looking for the next big good thing. I know Ultra Mouse has been around for a while, but I I mean, that's kind of my gamble, Gene. I think uh, there's a lot more things we can do with Ultra Mel. And I can even kind of start slowly getting Hypo and Ultra Mel. You can get Desert Ghost and you know, Ultra Mel, Clown. But we're gonna go at a nice steady pace. I mean, we're not over here trying to refinance the house to produce recessives. This is a great hobby. It's fun. It's something to do. She enjoys it. I enjoy it. 
it's not about the money. I just like the looks of the snakes. Uh, this summer, I'm kind of looking forward to being a part of a reptile show, joining that community. I think it would be, I think it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good little ride. I just thought I would share how you can get started breeding or, and then in the future, I plan on doing videos on, you know, little tips and tricks. You guys let me know in the comments uh, what you guys would like to hear. Uh, like I said, you guys, I wanted you guys to join the join the ride kind of from what uh, almost ground zero looks like. I know I've spent a little bit of money. I think I've spent between the rack and the snakes, maybe right around $3,000. Uh, but I mean, you can, you can, uh, at the very start, I think I spent, I don't know, maybe $700 between a PVC rack and three snakes. Uh, so you can get started cheap. You're gonna need a little bit to get started, but you really, you, you don't need the, the 50,000, the 100,000. You really don't wanna get started so fast that, like I said, you run into troubles later. Uh, but um, I got, you know, five year, five year plan sounds about right to where I can, I wanna move out of this room be able to have a bigger space, uh, have uh, different things go on. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that as building onto maybe a garage to the house, building a shed out back, not sure. But we do plan on growing, we do plan on, on leveling up. Uh, is there anything else you wanna say about the snakes, Daisy? She's pretty. She's pretty, they are pretty. Whenever you're up close. You check out these pastels near the belly. She got a pretty belly pastels. When they get bigger with them white spots, when they show, it'll be pretty nice when they get bigger. All right, well, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe or even share, definitely like. Uh, we're, we're level up reptiles. What level are you on?